I was wondering what your sweet spot is and in what kinds of businesses you like to invest. So we invest in technology and internet companies. So typically earlier stage companies um, in three major areas, software and web-based applications, um, IT and technology infrastructure, right. and consumer internet. In, right. For example, in the software uh, and space, we were the major investor and only venture investor in VMware. Uh, wow. In the consumer internet space, we were the uh, largest shareholder and early backer of uh, Bill Me Later, which we sold to eBay for a billion dollars in late 08. Wow. And the communications and IT infrastructure space, we've been backers of companies like Calix, which we took public earlier this year, and Worldwide Packets, which we sold to Sienna for $300 million in 2008. Fantastic. Great track record. What percentage of women startups do you get pitches for, and what percentage have you funded? So, uh, interesting enough, we've actually backed quite a few women. So oh, up to over 20% of our portfolio has uh, today is uh, represented by women CEOs. Wow, that's the uh, highest I've found of anyone. Well, you know, we've Brilliant had work. we've had a lot of luck with with women CEOs, yeah. and um, you know, we'll talk about pattern recognition in a few minutes. But mm -hmm. the um, you know the first woman CEO that we backed was Diane Green of VMware. Yes, and um, at the time. That was, um, you know, a very young company. They were doing just a few million dollars a year in revenue, and um, it was a husband and wife team, which is also kind of an unusual uh, uh, leadership team to back. Yes. And um, we had done a bunch of research in the space, and actually uh, were impressed with the opportunity. We had no idea how big VMware would eventually become. Yes. Uh, it exceeded our expectations, but. But clearly, um, that was a, that was a winner for us. We've we've been backing women CEOs, not as a strategy. Yes, I understand. We've been backing them because the way that we do our investments here is we try to um, actually avoid bias and do right. quite a bit of industrial research on the market opportunity and the space and the business models, and then. Um, use the evidence and, and our findings to make the decisions on who to invest in. And we find that uh, that yields quite a bit better results. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, a lot of times when we invest, it's viewed as a bit contrarian because we're ahead of the curve. Uh, but uh, the result of that is is that we have, I think, more of a representative mix of CEOs because yes. we, aren't, we aren't really kind of um, letting, we're trying, I mean, yes. we're all victims of bias, but we're trying yes. not to let bias uh, be uh, the driver of the investment decision. That being said, the success of the women CEOs that we have in the portfolio certainly reinforces the view that we should um, continue to be very balanced in our approach. That's so great. Have you noted differences with women entrepreneurs and how they pitch and build businesses? You know, I have to say um, that we get that question, I've gotten that question before, mm -hmm. and I think that um, it's very difficult to assign some sort of um, distinct characteristics to women CEOs relative to male CEOs. It's uh, hard to it, generalize, isn't it's it? It's very hard. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've had, we've had aggressive sales-oriented women CEOs, we've had aggressive sales oriented men CEOs, yes. we've had operationally focused CEOs of both genders, we've had um, more collaborative CEOs of both genders. Uh, it, it, it's just very hard to generalize. Okay. Cindy Gallup, founder of If We Ran the World, said in a recent interview, VCs fund in their own image white male. The cycle is self-perpetuating, so predominantly male. VCs have a preconceived notion in their heads of what they think constitutes a kind of entrepreneur to back. And John Doerr apparently said if you're a white, under 30 tech geek with no social life and a Harvard Stanford dropout lineup for VC money, he didn't say male, but he may, might as well have. If it had been a 17 year old Russian girl who came up with Chat Roulette, would there have been as much interest in funding whatever she might do next? What's your take on this, Cameron? And if, if this is happening, how can women startups find an opening in this culture? So the quote-unquote old boys network 
uh, exists in, in almost every industry. Right? Yes. And, uh, and I think that um, Silicon Valley is no different. The, um, the success of this community is in large part the fact that there are established institutions that um, have continued to generate quite a bit of successful uh, outcomes. So Stanford, for the Stanford community, for example, uh, there's a huge number of alums that have come out of that school yes. that have done very well. Um, I think that uh, the other pattern that people have, uh, have seen generate a lot of success is people coming out of successful tech companies, whether it be a Google or before that uh, a Netscape, or, and, and, and then starting their own businesses. Um, and so I think VCs have in general been victim to the fact that uh, they see if you come with a Stanford background or another, let's say an Ivy League background, a Harvard background, you're, and you have worked at an Apple or a Google or a Netscape or you know you pick your 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 hot uh, tech company mm -hmm. and um, you're typically younger therefore associated with working you know the hundred hour weeks <laughs> uh, and you're well spoken so therefore you can be viewed as someone who can market to the uh, your business to customers future other investors acquirers you're somebody that should be backed. And so, uh, as we sit in partner meetings, and somebody comes in with that that uh, that school background and that pedigree in terms of where they worked, and um, and pitches, if they they speak well and they 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 have that background, there's a comfort zone. Right. Okay. Uh, that being said, I think that um, that uh, can lead to a lot of erroneous decisions. The um, the way to make money in this business is not to make money by backing what everybody else is backing. The way to make money in venture capital is to think ahead, uh, against the grain and be ahead of the curve and to invest in something that has yet to be discovered by everybody else and to build it into something great. And whether it's a male CEO or female CEO doing that um, is really irrelevant. And what we found is, um, at least in, in, in the experience that we've had in over a decade of doing this, that um, there's a crop of women CEOs that are doing great things in this industry and um, what what we're trying to do as a, as a firm here is to back something that doesn't necessarily check all the boxes but has the potential to be great and I think um, if you take that mindset you get out of the trap that you just described wow. of backing um, you know the, the pedigreed male CEO from the right school with the right work background. And it's obviously been successful for your, your uh, firm, hasn't it? I absolutely, mean, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Now, Cindy also says, I think not as many women as men actively seek VC money because they're not as tapped into the boys' network as male entrepreneurs are. Young male entrepreneurs can very easily become the flavour of the month and get introduced around from one VC to another and get the perception going that they're hot and get their funding. It doesn't happen for women that way. Do you think that networking with venture capitalists is harder for women entrepreneurs? I think that that is changing. Right. Um, there are, we're noticing that perhaps because there's fewer of them, women CEOs are taking a very serious, um, or have a very serious attitude towards helping one another and networking and providing um, insight and resources. I was just uh, meeting with one of our uh, women CEOs and I was listening to her talk about how she had gotten together over the weekend with another one of our women CEOs who she knew prior to Azure and um, before you know we had ever invested in, in those two companies and, and it's, an, it's a, a relationship they've kept for, for years and they were working to help each other sort out some of the issues that they had with their respective companies. Right. And I think that, um, and I was in, I've been invited to a couple different events over the past year of women CEOs and entrepreneurs networking and helping each other. So I think, I think there is a concerted effort on the part of the successful women entrepreneurs in the Valley to really uh, build their own set of networks 
and help each uh, help um, those who are less connected get inserted into the kind of the mainstream venture capital entrepreneurial network. I think this is a work in process. You know, ten years from now, will be you know it'll it'll be much further along. Yes. Um, but I do think that these types of initiatives and the kind of uh, I would say rallying cry that I've seen here among some of the most successful women CEOs is having um, is having a good effect. That coupled with the fact that some of these women CEOs are generating great results yes. is what ultimately gets everybody's attention. The proof of the pudding.